Hi friends of Redeemer, I want to take a minute and just thank you for taking time to watch this video. Uh, we want to share a bit about what God has been doing at Redeemer in the last several years and this past season, um, and also what we believe He's about to do. Now, if you're a Redeemer member, you may find this helpful as well if you haven't been able to attend the uh, member meetings or, or watch the videos. But basically, as you know or may not know, Redeemer has been mobile. Redeemer Cedar Rapids has been mobile for about seven years. We used to own a building down in the Mountain View neighborhood and we opted to go mobile. We believed that God was calling us to go mobile and we'd trust him for a place to be eventually. Now we knew that being mobile would not be a long-term strategy and we believed that at some point God would be moving us to a permanent place. We didn't know that would happen this year. The pandemic got us kicked out of Kennedy. We were doing church in Cedar Rapids at Kennedy High School and it's been great in different ways. It had its challenges, but it was good. And it was a home for several years. When the pandemic hit, we basically were ushered out of there and it became apparent that we weren't gonna be allowed back into Kennedy. They had other things to figure out. They had to figure out how to serve their kids and we were pretty low on their priority list. Well, by the time the churches were allowed to gather again in June, thankfully God had provided a place at a local business here called Legacy Manufacturing. And they were very hospitable and they allowed us in and it was great. It also had its challenges. It wasn't big enough and we were doing basically one kid's ministry room in the kitchen. And so, again, thankful, but we knew it wouldn't be a permanent place and they wouldn't want us there long term either. Well, that end came pretty quickly when the derecho hit. Many of you know that Cedar Rapids got hit by a derecho in August, which is basically a natural disaster with sustained winds of over 100 miles an hour. Cedar Rapids got destroyed. We lost 70 percent of our canopy. Many, many structures got basically demolished. Legacy Manufacturing didn't get demolished, but they sustained some damage to the point where they were getting water in the conference room and we couldn't be there anymore. So we were out on the street once again. Thankfully, in God's timing, he provided a place for us to be here at Lindale Mall. And it's been good, right? We've been here since August and we enjoy the worship. We just did church today and I really, really loved it. We have one space that we use for worship and we have another space that we use for kids ministry and we're thankful for it. But again, number one, it's not ideal for this. It's not made for this. We're cobbling together rooms in an old hair salon for kids ministry and, um, and we believe we're going to outgrow this place. And so we've been praying, seeking for years, many of you know, that where would God take us? Where would he be taking us to have a place where we could be and have ultimately a long-term effect and impact on this community? We believe that for Redeemer to have a multi-generational impact on Cedar Rapids and the surrounding area, we need to be in a facility, right? Our vision is not just for the next two, five, or seven years, but for the next 50. Another way that God has been working at Redeemer, right? He's been giving us this longing for a place, but also a, a growing hunger for mission. Now we wanna celebrate what God is doing and Redeemer is on mission. And I talk and pray with people all the time over sharing the gospel and reaching out to the neighbors and coworkers, but it's not enough. 2 Corinthians 4.15 is one of those verses that has stuck with me over the last several years. And it says this, that as grace extends to more and more people, thanksgiving increases to the glory of God. So there's this idea that as more and more people are brought into the kingdom and brought into worship, that thanksgiving rises up to God and it gives him more glory. And so we want that. Like We're thankful for what God has done through Redeemer, but it's, it's not enough. We're hungry for more. And so we want to do our part. We want to preach and pray and share the gospel, but we're really asking God to do something in a surprising way. We believe he's preparing us and giving that hunger. But what we didn't know is that he was also working with another part of his church in complementary ways. And that's Youth for Christ. Many of you have heard of Youth for Christ. Youth for Christ is a parachurch missional organization that's out in the schools reaching junior high and high school kids that may never have an opportunity to hear about Jesus. And they've been in the area in Cedar Rapids for about 60 years and have never had a home. So for the past 60 years, they've been dependent on churches to let them office with them and do events there. Well, this past year, God moved really quickly and provided Youth for Christ with a facility. And so now they finally have a place where they can teach, train, bring kids in, and even send out people from. One of the things about Youth for Christ is that they love the church. They know they're not a local church. They are a parachurch, so they're a complement to the church, and the church is a complement to them. And so immediately when they got this building, Mark Moyer, the executive director at Youth for Christ, reached out to churches because he figured this is a great opportunity and a place to share with the church. They can do their ministry and outreach during the week, and a church could come in here on the weekends and do worship and their thing. And so I heard about that and I went and met Mark. I had met Mark before and I'd heard of Youth for Christ. So I was really curious to see how this would develop. Well, when we showed up or when I showed up, I realized pretty quickly that this facility would not work for Redeemer. It was just too small. It's in great shape. There's a lot to it. They have a, a great big meeting space. They have a kid's wing. 
upstairs that would be really great for our kids. But in terms of a worship space, it just, we couldn't fit half our people in here. And so pretty quickly, I felt like it was a bust. I kept talking with Mark and just getting to know each other more. And he shared that their long-term vision was to build a gym next door because there's a vacant plot of land. This is where the idea came in that Redeemer could build a gym slash worship space and then we could share the facilities. Their building works great for us for like a foyer and like I said, the kids wing for our kids ministry. And our space would be great for worship and also for them to use for outreach and to bring kids in and reach the neighborhood. So as the pastors and the members of Redeemer have considered this opportunity over the last several months, we believe that it's just something that we need to pursue. Number one, it makes so much sense financially to be able to only spend money on 6,500 square feet of facility but have access to 15,000 is unbelievable and there's also free parking here we wouldn't have to spend money on that there's street parking and there's actually a parking lot across the street that is free on the weekends and so financially it makes a lot of sense but more than that as i've continued to walk through this and get to know youth for christ and what they're doing it's really that second part of the of the vision the the mission that i'm getting really excited about yeah an affordable facility is great and a beautiful facility is great but for god to really work with redeemer and youth for christ and really help us do more together than we can alone. I'm really eager to see Youth for Christ, to bring their strengths of mission and evangelism, an area that we wanna grow in and we wanna be inspired by them. But for the church to bring our strengths of long-term discipleship, right? We have the structures and the families to welcome kids and even their families and bring them into community. Youth for Christ needs that. And we're excited to see those things come together and bear fruit for the kingdom. We're already beginning to see that partnership develop as some of Redeemer's members are beginning to do training with Youth for Christ and beginning to engage some of the students. So where are we at? Well, the Redeemer membership in Cedar Rapids voted to go ahead and start taking pledges. And we entered in January what we called phase one, which was just going to the members and taking pledges there. And we wanted to see if there was internal buy-in. We set a goal of $625,000 and by the end of January, we had reached 85% of that goal. And so for us, that meant that we were affirmed that there was internal buy-in for this vision. Redeemer is behind this. So now we enter phase two. Phase two means we'll continue to fundraise at Redeemer and in our membership. There are people that have said to me, hey, I still wanna get my pledge together and that's great. We're excited for that. But we're also reaching out beyond Redeemer. We know that we have friends that wanna help. How do we know? Because they've literally called me. I've had people call and said, hey, how can we help? We're excited about what God is doing at Redeemer, at Youth for Christ, and with this potential partnership. And so we wanna help. And up until now, I've said, well, just hold on because we wanna just test the waters first in phase one and see if we really have the buy-in in the members. And we do. So at this point, we're gladly opening this up to phase two, which includes reaching out to our friends, which is you. So I do wanna ask you, would you consider joining us in this? If you feel like God has blessed you through Redeemer or you see what he's doing with Redeemer and Youth for Christ, would you consider joining in that and praying for us, praying for our partnership, praying for mission, but also pledging. If that's something that you feel led to do, we've included a link to the pledge form above or below this video and just click on through. It's a pretty simple form. But if you have questions more about the vision or how the pledging works, you can reach me at Donovan at RedeemerHome.com and I would love to sit with you. So I already mentioned that we're about 85% of the way to our $625,000 goal and really excited by that. But the question comes up, what if we reach 100%? What if we reach 130, 140%? Right now we're talking about just one level, a gym slash worship space. But if God provides abundantly, we'd be more than glad to put another 6,500 square feet under there that could have more kids space and just ministry space, right? For events, for Youth for Christ, for the community and for Redeemer. Ultimately that's up to God, but that would be really, really encouraging. So Redeemer friends, thank you so much for tuning in and just hearing how God has been working. Really thankful, really excited and feel free to reach out with any questions. All right, love you.